Okay, so this video is called What If You Lived in the Jurassic Period? The thumbnail shows T Rex and another dinosaur that's in Cretaceous, I think. It's supposed to be Jurassic, not Cretaceous. Two hundred and fifty two million years ago, ancient life on Earth suffered a serious blow from a deadly combination of what is this supposed to be? Is I'm getting really confused right now, right at the beginning of the video. Heat and low oxygen. Ninety five percent of all marine species perished, and two thirds of terrestrial species vanished. I can't believe we're talking about paleogeology right now, but if you're talking about the Permian Triassic extinction event, you're incorrect. 57% of biological families, 83% of genera, 81% of marine species, and 70% of terrestrial vertebrate species went extinct. It was a cataclysm so severe that it looked like the end of all life on planet Earth. But as the saying goes, life finds a way, and the most well-known prehistoric creatures would rise on Earth, the dinosaurs. If you love dinosaurs, not that infamous spino model. Source, then get ready to see your That's a goofy ah uh, over fluid sauropod running. Favorites, how they evolved, and how they would rule the earth for millions of years. But this video is titled What If You Lived in the Jurassic Period? Oh boy, it's going to be another one of those generic clickbait paleontology videos that I've seen. How how many times now? The extinction you spelled mesozoic wrong the a is supposed to be an e event of the permian triassic era 252 million years ago marked the beginning of the mesozoic era of the triassic jurassic and cretaceous period which lasted 186 million years when we just get into the title already what do you live in the jurassic period so uh, a not clickbait video would be you end up in the Jurassic period, where there are lots of allosaurs, stegosaurs, brachiosaurs roaming around. Ceratosaurus, you get it, that's late Jurassic. Early Jurassic, Dilophosaurus. Like, how would you deal with this and deal with that? That's it. During the Triassic era, there was one vast supercontinent called Pangaea, which was mostly vast deserts with a hot and dry climate surrounded by a huge ocean called Panthalassa. Dinosaurs would begin to evolve during the mid to late Triassic. You're now just showing pterosaurs instead of dinosaurs. Sick period. When we talk about dinosaurs, we immediately imagine towering and thundering. Oh, is that the clash of the dinosaurs, Saur Poseidon? Uh, people are just mistaking this for Brachiosaurus. This is Saur Poseidon from Clash of the Dinosaurs. Saur Poseidon, early Cretaceous. Animals like Tyrannosaurus Rex. It's from the end of the Cretaceous. But new research shows that the dinosaurs and their pterosaur relatives evolved from extremely small ancestors. Proof of this theory was discovered in Madagascar when a newly discovered reptile species was found. Named Congonophon Kelly or Tiny Bug Slayer, it lived some 237 million years ago and stood just 10 centimeters tall. It's one of the first small animals found from the root of the Ornithodora family tree and is an important discovery. Facts that have nothing to do with the title called What Have You Lived in the Jurassic Period? We're now talking about a random pterosaur morph from the mid to late Triassic. The miniaturization event in which it lived served as a survival strategy for early ornithodorans, and wear on its teeth showed the tiny creature preyed on insects. This eliminated the need for them to compete with their relatives for meat. Furthermore, researchers of this tiny dinosaur relative showed that feathers and other fuzzy skin coverings found on the later true dinosaurs and pterosaurs likely originated to protect the tiny dino ancestors from the extreme climate of the mid to late Triassic period when the first dinosaurs evolved. Okay, you're getting stuff correct, but when will we get to the point? Never? The Triassic marked the rise of the reptiles, mainly the archosaurs or ruling lizards, and therapsids or mammal-like reptiles. Rise of mammal-like reptiles eventually turned into the rise of mammals. 
For reasons unknown, the archosaurs had an evolutionary edge, muscling out their mammal-like cousins and evolving by the mid to late Triassic into the first true dinosaurs, such as Eoraptor and Herrerasaurus. Dinosaurs were divided into two main branches, Sauriscian, which means lizard-hipped, and Ornithischian, or bird-hipped dinosaurs. Both Eoraptor and Herrerasaurus were Sauriscians. Eoraptor was at the root of the Sauriscian family tree, it was only 91 centimeters long, which is probably a bit too small. It probably grew to around 1 to 1.7 meters in length. And weighed about 11 kilograms. Yeah, around 5 to 10. 11 could be possible. It had long legs that allowed it to run fast, and its front paws had sharp claws that helped it to grab prey. Herrerasaurus was more advanced in evolution than the Eoraptor. What do you mean by that? Eoraptor is no less evolved than the Herrerasaurus, just like how the Ceratosaurus is not less evolved than the Allosaurus. Because it had a joint in its lower jaw, it had a large skull, and its jaws were armed with the sharp teeth of a carnivore. It averaged in length from 3 to 6 meters, and had five fingers on each paw with blunt claws. The first two fingers and the thumb and curved sharp claws for grasping prey. The fourth and fifth digits were small stubs without claws. Storicosaurus was another early true dinosaur that was about two meters long with- You said two meters long, which is uh, plausible, but around 2.1, 2.2 .2 .2 to 2.25. However, what you showed at the bottom is three to six meters. You forgot to edit that. A large skull as long as its femur, and there were 13 to 14 sharp teeth. I can't find a source for it, so I can't prove you right or wrong. In its upper and lower jaws. It has short front paws with five fingers. It had long hind legs that allowed it to run fast. Storicosaurus was a predator that weighed about 30 kilograms. It probably weighed at around 12 kilograms. And although this dinosaur was kind of small, it probably had no trouble dealing with larger prey. Eoraptor, Herrerasaurus, and Storicosaurus are prime examples of the rapid evolution of predatory dinosaurs 225 million years ago. All three of them went extinct by the time that is 225 million years ago. Eoraptor and Herrerasaurus went extinct 3 million years prior, Storicosaurus 8 million. Actually, Herrerasaurus went extinct around 4 million years prior. But at the same time, the first plant-eating dinosaurs appeared in the fossil record. Pisanosaurus was a 1-meter dinosaur that weighed 2 to 9 kilograms. Pisanosaurus went extinct 229 million years ago, 4 million years prior to what you mentioned as 225 million years ago. And had closely spaced teeth, forming a continuous edge for grinding plant matter. By the late Triassic period, there were at least 15 different dinosaurs. During the Jurassic period, Earth's climate changed from hot and dry to a much more humid and subtropical climate. Forests of ferns, cycads, and conifers began to cover the planet and the air was warm, moist, with tropical breezes. Okay, so we're finally talking about the Jurassic period. Good, then. It's hot, so you sweat quite often, but it's humid, so your sweat doesn't evaporate off of you and you can't really cool yourself down. I'm currently taking physics and biology classes right now, so I know this. During the beginning of this period, the breakup of the supercontinent Pangaea continued and accelerated. But we're just shown a rough one from Cretaceous. It should have been Jurassic, but mostly Cretaceous here. Laurasia, the northern half of the continent, broke up into North America and Eurasia. The southern half, called Gondwana, began to break up during the mid-Jurassic. The eastern parts, Antarctica, Madagascar, India, and Australia, split off from the western half of Africa and South America. The present-day continents and the Cretaceous continents you showed both are reversed. Dude, how are you this freaking careless? New oceans flooded the spaces in between. 
Huge mountains rose on the seafloor and pushed sea levels higher onto the continents. It was all this water that created the humid and subtropical climate. Deserts began to turn green. Palm tree-like cycads and conifer trees such as the araucaria and pine were abundant. Yeah, we're going to have to deviate from paleontology to paleogeology, whatever. The oceans became full of diverse and abundant life, and at the top of the ocean food chain were the marine reptiles. The plesiosaurs, with their long necks and paddle fin flippers. Among them were giant marine crocodiles, sharks, and rays. Ichthyosaurs, squid-like cephalopods, coil-shelled ammonites, sponges, snails, and mollusks were abundant in the ancient oceans. Okay, so the amount of oxygen concentration in the Jurassic is quite similar to that of today. Coral reefs grew and expanded quickly in the warm waters, and microscopic plankton increased rapidly to the point that they may have turned parts of the ocean red. The earliest known bird, Archaeopteryx. It's not a bird, it's just a bird-like dinosaur. Birds actually started to appear only in the late Cretaceous. However, there's a possibility that they also appeared in early Cretaceous or early late Cretaceous based on molecular clock. Took to the skies in the late Jurassic, likely evolved from an early Celiosaurian dinosaur. Archaeopteryx had to compete for airspace with pterosaurs, flying reptiles that had been buzzing the sky since the late Triassic. Meanwhile, insects such as leafhoppers and beetles were abundant, as many of Earth's earliest mammals scurried around the feet of dinosaurs. It was at this time that the dinosaurs began making. Dude, you're just showing a sore Poseidon once again. If you're really talking about Jurassic, just show Brachiosaurus. Not Sora Poseidon. Although on average we will get confused because Sora Poseidon and Brachiosaurus are quite similar. Actually, uh, that kind of looks more like a giraffe titan than a Brachiosaurus. A Brachiosaurus is supposed to be more uh, robust. Making their mark in a huge way. Literally. Small quadrupedal plant-eating dinosaurs gradually evolved into multi-ton giants. The plant-eating sauropod named Brachiosaurus. This doesn't look like a Brachiosaurus to me. This is the Brachiosaurus, as you can see. Was 16 meters tall and stretched out to around 26 meters long and could weigh as much as 25 tons. Brachiosaurus, 62 tons, 27.4 meters in length. Another herbivorous sauropod giant named Diplodocus, Diplodocus was 27 meters long and weighed between 30 to 50 tons. Diplodocus holorum is around 29 to 32 meters in length. A 29 meter long Diplodocus holorum weighs 23 metric tons in body mass. The Diplodocus carnegie has a total length of 24 to 26 meters and a mass of 12 to 14.8 metric tons. The sheer size of these dinosaur giants may have stopped the attacks of a bulky meat-eating dinosaur that walked on two powerful legs who also lived during this time, the ominous Allosaurus. Now, my answer to what if you lived in the Jurassic period? It depends on when in the Jurassic period and where do you go. This huge carnivore ranged in size from 7 to 12 meters long. Only Allosaurus europaeus was that short. And also, neither Allosaurus fragilis nor Allosaurus gematsoni are that long at 12 meters. Although it is possible that a very long Sorphaginax would have reached this length. Weighed nearly two tons. Allosaurus fragilis, an average one is around 1.7 metric tons, the largest definitive AMH 680 specimen, weighing it at 2.3 to 2.7 metric tons. Allosaurus gematsoni, the big owl, reached around 1.4 metric tons. It could have reached two metric tons. Its best estimate is 1.5 metric tons. It's a sub-adult, Allosaurus europeanus, one metric ton. And had 16 sharp teeth in its upper and lower jaw. And like many predatory dinosaurs of the Mesozoic era, Allosaurus constantly grew, shed, and replaced its three to four inch teeth. And this dinosaur was fast. Models suggest that Allosaurus could run up to- This hatchet Allosaurus from Plant Dinosaur is now outdated, unfortunately. 34 kilometers per hour. 
Fossil evidence shows that Allosaurus preyed on Stegosaurus, and the plant-eating dinosaur fought back, punching holes right through Allosaurus's bones with its spiky clubbed tail. It could be why Stegosaurus had a pretty long run and survived all the way up to the late Cretaceous. Yeah, it survived quite long because it was able to defend itself. Any creature that's capable of defending itself, itself will last quite long and literally any creature can defend themselves. Also, you're now just showing Triceratops from Clash of the Dinosaurs, along with that T-Rex. But there were new predators that would come along that were as equally terrifying as the Allosaurus. The North American Tyrannosaurus Rex could grow 12.5 meters long. 12.4 meters long, so 12.5 meters long is reasonable. And weighed up to eight to 10 tons, Although now some say it might have weighed half of these estimates. No, do they think that's a Tarbosaurus or something? But the T-Rex wasn't alone in the meat-eating dinosaur category. In fact, it was either outclassed or equal to two other sharp-toothed monsters. The South American Giganontosaurus, which had the same type of build and weighed nine tons. Okay, so it's the second largest terrestrial carnivore. Even then... If nine tons, it wasn't that large. It probably weighed in at around eight tons. And the 10 ton Northern African. That dreaded, outdated design from 2003 to 2009, whatever. Also, T Rex slams every third part except their own. Ironically, the only dinosaurs capable of killing T Rex are herbivores Triceratops, Ankies. Sauropods, you get the idea. Spinosaurus. Still, the T-Rex was a mean and nasty predator, if not downright unhygienic. Mean? Like, it's an animal. It's not a jerk. Experts believe that shards of rotten bacteria-laden meat was constantly lodged in its closely packed teeth, which gave the animal a septic bite that would eventually be fatal to its wounded prey. So, that theory is basically... JFC's wild T-Rex tick bite theory. Like, bitten could get an infection, but there is absolutely no evidence that there is a special bacteria that causes septic shock. Of course, this process would have taken at least several days or weeks, and another T-Rex would probably reap the rewards. Scientists examining the T-Rex skull determined it had the bite force of between 1,500 to 5,000 pounds per square inch and could take bites of flesh in the 225 kilogram range. But Tyrannosaurus rex, like Allosaurus, had problems with prey itself. It lived in the same region and time period as some armored plant-eating dinosaurs. That could just outright beat the T-Rex, like... Have you seen a Ceratopsian goring a T-Rex or Anki simply whacking the T-Rex's legs or something? One of the most iconic dinosaurs next to T-Rex has to be Triceratops. Is that the Triceratops from Ark? Which means three-horned face. All Triceratops had three-horned skulls. Two massive horns were above the eye socket and one smaller horn was over the nose. Weighing around 6.5 to 13 tons. Triceratops process is around 8.4 to 8.6 tons, while Triceratops horridus was smaller at around 5.4 metric tons. The biggest Triceratops was 9 meters long from nose to tail. Dinosaur size is determined by mass, not length. The tips of their shoulders were 3 meters off the ground. Triceratops had teeth arranged in dental batteries and each individual tooth was stacked in a vertical column of three to five teeth. These formed rows with 36 to 40 tooth-loaded columns. This means that a single Triceratops could have 800 teeth at its disposal. It had a narrow beak and powerful jaws that allowed it to grind down tough vegetation and trees. It's one of the last non-avian dinosaurs to evolve at the end of the Cretaceous. Ankylosaurus, 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 you didn't even try at all, is another of the most famous armored dinosaurs. Okay, forgot to mention, Triceratops process was 8 to 9 meters in length, Triceratops horridus is 
6.7 to 7.3 meters in length. Anki, 6 meters is too short. 8 meters is a more reasonable estimate. It was the largest Ankylosaurid and the last of its kind. It's thought to have lived right up to the end of the Cretaceous period. The body of this is Sauropelta, not Anki. Ankylosaurs was covered in bony plates. It had a beak and teeth and four horns that projected backwards from its head. Also, another thing I forgot to mention, we're in the Cretaceous now. No regards for the video's title. What do you live in the Jurassic period? Its tail ended in a club, which provided protection from predators. This would have been- You're now showing an ankylosaur with no clubs. Useful, since ankylosaurs lived alongside Tyrannosaurus rex and other meat-eating predators. At some point during the middle of the Cretaceous period, dinosaurs from the ornithopod family evolved into the popular hadrosaur, or duck-billed dinosaurs. They were large, oddly shaped, low-slung vegetation eaters with tough beaks on their snouts, which were used for shredding vegetation. These dinosaurs are believed to have lived in herds and were capable of walking on two legs. A more plausible one is that they ran on two legs and when walking, they were on all fours. Sauropods became even bigger by the late Cretaceous period. You may have thought that Brachiosaurus and Diplodocus were big, but by the time the late Cretaceous period rolled around, there was another dinosaur that existed, which could possibly be the biggest land animal that's ever walked the Earth. That's because it is. It's the Argentinosaurus hoinculensis, 81.8 to 84 tons in mass. Argentinosaurus. This behemoth could be 30 to 40 meters in length. 20 meters for an upper estimate is a bit too much. 35. And weighed between 50 and 100 tons. Still too massive even for the 80 something tons. Wikipedia says 60 to 75 tons. Whatever, Mikhail the Komodo dragon and someone else. 81.8 to 84 tons. It was a member of the Titanosauria the dominant group during the Cretaceous period, and was a herbivore like its earlier sauropod cousins. There was also a strange new breed of dinosaur that lived 20 million years before they all went extinct. They were called Pachycephalosaurus. Okay, so you imply that the Pachycephalosaurus lived from 86 million years ago, which is absolutely incorrect. It lived during 70 million years ago, all the way to the end of the Cretaceous or bone-headed dinosaurs, and have a bizarre-looking skull with horns on the snout and around the base of the skull. These could have been used to fight off the last of the big predators, or even to show dominance over their own species. Pachycephalosaurus probably defended against something like a Dakota raptor or something. Of course, there are more than 700 different dinosaurs that have been found so far, but not enough time to cover them all in one video. There are some dinosaurs that lived in the colder regions, when they were further south and within the Antarctic Circle during the Cretaceous. Which is correct. Just look at Prince Creek Formation and March of the Dinosaurs. During this time, there could have been some snow and ice and temperatures as low as minus 10 degrees Celsius during the three-month-long dark winters. There were a variety of different dinosaurs living in this polar zone. In 2014, a skull section and upper and lower jaw bones were found of a miniature T-Rex called Nanaxaurus hoglandi. Miniature T-Rex. It's a Tyrannosaurine, but it is not a T-Rex at all. It's believed that many dinosaurs had feathers to protect them from the elements, and this tiny T-Rex- Tiny T-Rex again. Like, I know it's similar to T-Rex, but... Can you please stop calling Nanuxaurus a tiny T-Rex for a second? His cousin was about six meters long. It's now believed that all species of Tyrannosaurus rex had feathers to protect them from the elements. All species of Tyrannosaurus rex. Okay, so Tyrannosaurus do have feathers, at least the smaller ones, and juveniles of bigger ones. Albertosaurus definitely had feathers, so did Lythronax, but uh, adult T-Rexes, probably not so much. Juvenile T-Rexes, they also had feathers. And Nanoxaurus was no different. Other dinosaurs... Okay, so this Pachyrhinosaurus' boss is pretty peculiar, if I gotta be honest. 
like the horned and duck-billed dinosaurs, along with other small feathery predators, parrot-like oviraptors, and a small herbivore named Lielanosaura, lived in the polar region as well. Okay, so Australia was closer to the poles 118 to 110 million years ago. So, uh, I guess you're half correct on this one? But their time would soon come to an end. Everyone talks about how dramatically the dinosaurs went extinct. No, the dinosaurs did not went extinct. Birds are dinosaurs, and they managed to live and managed to thrive. But judging by the whopping 165 million years they survived, they might just be the most successful vertebrate animals to ever exist on planet Earth. In fact, some dinosaur relatives are still around on the planet today. No, birds are not dinosaur relatives. They are dinosaurs. If you're talking about crocodilians, which is part of the Cetosuchia, which combined that with Avermatotarsalia, which includes Aphanosauria, Pterosauromorpha, and Dinosauromorpha, then you're correct. Modern day birds are, in fact, descendants of feathered dinosaurs. And you might be surprised to learn that crocodiles are the closest living relatives to birds, as they shared a common ancestor. The two groups are the only known survivors of the archosaurs. We all know what happened to the dinosaurs, and if you missed our video on the day the dinosaurs went extinct, we'll put a link in the description for you. Please let us know in the- What is this mall supposed to be? It looks less like paleontology. It looks more like an abomination. Comment what you thought about the video, and tell us what you'd like to see next. Stay tuned for more cool videos, and thanks for watching. Okay, so I saw a scaly raptor something, and then there's that abomination of a Spinosaurus model once again. Essentially, uh, this is the end of the video. So, yeah, not a great paleontology video, but, uh, I mean, what can you expect from big channels at this point? Those clickbait big channels that want to get cash in. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. See you all next time.